Right now we're standing in one of four pattern barns here located at Spring City. This is where we keep our tooling or patterns that helps make obviously the mold impression where this starts the process of making the lighting pole. Uh, we're going to walk over here to, this is a Washington uh, 12 or 10P uh, post. And what separates us from our competition, again, is the intricacies of how we make our patterns. Now, I want to talk, I'm going to talk about loose pieces. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to actually talk about the process that we're going to see as we walk into the foundry. Uh, picture yourself as, a, as a, a kid, you know, on the beach with uh, playing in the sand. Um, I use this uh, terminology because it's, it really simplifies the process. Taking a seashell and wet sand, pressing that seashell into the sand, pulling it out gives you that mold impression. Well, that's pretty much what we do here, a little bit more sophisticated, but pretty much the terminology or analogy that we would use for um, describing the process. But what you need to remember is when you pull that pattern out of the sand, anything over a 100 degree plane, um, you could lose the ornamentation and detail into the sides as you pull that pattern out. So that's what common sense would say. So what we've developed and, and good foundry practice developed are loose pieces. And I'll show you. You have to visualize this mold that's going to be down, face down into the sand. And when you pull that uh, pattern out of the sand, these pieces here, I've disattached one of them right now, will actually stay in the sand. So it pretty much releases itself as you pull this pattern out. These stay in the sides, and then the master craftsman gently pull these out of the side of the mold to keep that continuity of the decorative element that's on the side of this fluted shaft, especially when you start getting into even a more decorative portions of the base, like this piece here. This piece will actually stay in the mold, and they'll remove it and keep that ornate detail inside that fixture or inside the, the mold cavity. That's extremely important because our product is known for its quality and its craftsmanship and the continuation of um, utilizing uh, the loose pieces enables us to really put out a beautiful product. Those uh, other companies that don't use it get more of a washed out feeling, especially when you get into, the, they'll go around where the pole is all detailed, get to what's called the parting live or the half of the pole, and you'll see it washed out or the detail um, fuzzy or they fake grind in any of the details. So it's not um, the best practice, and uh, we utilize these pieces to give the customer the product that they're looking for. Um, this post over here, is a Franklin post that we use in Society Hill, Pennsylvania, or Philadelphia. Uh, we also use it a lot, uh, Walt Disney likes the pole. Uh, they have on their, a lot of their piers and stuff like that a uh, version of this particular pole. Um, this is a Northampton base that uh, is missing some of the loose pieces. You see the marks, the numeric marks, marks where the pieces would be. Just a different style base. Over here is a decorative cross arm that we use for the city of Oakland. You can see the ornate detail. Um, again, uh, this is what Spring City is noted for, um, and it's really not seen by any other manufacturer as far as the decorative element. Right now we're inside the foundry, and Ernie Knight, an employee here who's been here 24 years, one of our key master craftsmen is uh, ramming a Washington DC post. You can see that sand that we were talking about. Uh, this is pressing the sand around the pattern and really the sand that's being used is what's called uh, green sand. It doesn't look green, but it's actually a black sand, but it's, it's green sand because it hasn't been baked. It's a mixture of um, regular sand, clay, and uh, moisture, uh, as well as some chemical binders. Right now, Ernie's just getting off the excess sand, and pretty soon he'll start 
putting the gate in and the risers in, which we'll get we'll talk about. I'm going to show you an example of the sand when it's compressed. Here it is. It's a it has a little moisture in it against some chemicals in it that cause the it, for it to bind. Once I squeeze it or compress it, like Ernie was doing, that solidifies it, and that will keep the mold solid when we pour the uh, liquid iron into these bowls tonight. Now this sand is what's called olivine sand, and it's uh, a non-toxic sand. Um, one of the things that uh, there's two made two good reasons you, we use this sand. One, the solidification of it. When the when the iron goes into this mold, it's very volatile, and it wants to push the sand and, and break it up. But the sand binders and the and the, and the particles hold it together. The other is that it doesn't because we don't use silica in the sand. Um, it's non-toxic and safe for the workers here as the iron goes in at 2700 degrees and the burn off happens and there's no excess fumes that could harm any of the employees here. What you're seeing now is a New York City standard post and they're actually, what we talked about, pulling out the tooling or the pattern. Bobby Olimack and his, his assistant, Bobby's been here 20 plus years as a master molder. And you can see what I talked about in the pattern barn. The loose pieces that still, they've come off the, the pattern as they've pulled it out of the mold. As soon as they take the two bases out, or the halves of the pattern, then they'll start taking out the additional loose pieces that are in the mold. And this particular pole here is a beautiful pole. It's the New York City Standard Bishop's Crook Pole. There's ivy that runs up and down the, the shaft section and real decorative or neat detail up at the top and the bottom of the pole. See how he's starting to remove the loose pieces down at the bottom of the base that have the decorative floral vines on the, on the BC base. Again, without these loose pieces, you would not have this detail, or it would be really washed out. What we're looking at right now is the mold open. You have the cope and the drag, which is the bottom portion. You can see what we talked about when we were in the pattern barn, the decorative element that's all up and through the inside of the pole and the pole base. Without those loose pieces, we would have lost all this detail in the base and in the shaft. What you see down the center are actually the chaplets, and that supports the core. And we talked briefly about that in the pattern shop. The core is what makes the pole hollow. You can see how the core is laying in on the, on the chaplets and supporting. And here's the void, or what's going to be designated the wall thickness, as when the liquid iron flows through, this will be the portion of going around the entire core and into the impression of the molds. These areas here help the flow of the iron to equally distribute through the pole, as well as any excess that needs to push away from the casting. Now we're closing the molds. You really get a good example of the solidification of the sand and how it maintains its, its solid. And we're closing the mold. You can see some of the gasketing that's around to the, around the core, make sure that there's no 
seepage. Now as he unlocks the overhead crane, you see those metal spikes, so to speak, that are sticking up. Those are the cha actual chaplets that are help supporting the core inside the mold. And in a few minutes, he'll start cutting that off. But they'll also start putting the C-clamps, the wedges to hold that flask jacket together. So as they're pouring the iron, uh, the iron doesn't try to force the mold apart. Now earlier when Ernie was um, ramming the sand, it takes a lot of really effort and, and, and um, experience in doing it because if he tamps too hard around the, the pattern, he could destroy the pattern. If he tamps too lightly, when he's, when the, when the iron's pouring, the mold could fall apart. So. He has to be pretty much dead on as, as we're tamping the sand and getting the mold ready for pouring tonight. You can see the, the, the labor that goes into this. You don't want to have to redo this. And losing a mold is extremely costly. And these guys are fantastic about not allowing that to happen. What we're looking at right now is the BMM machine. It's an automated machine that we use. on the smaller bases. Basically, the same process but done automated with this machine. And in a few seconds, it will flip over and you'll get the uh, bottom portion of the mold exposed. We're making Washington twin cross arms here, which are our cross arm is what goes on top of the uh, decorative pole, and this particular arm holds two light fixtures. Taking the flask off, I'm gonna bring it over to the floor so they can put the core in. Again, as you look at the arm eight detail, there's even loose pieces involved in when we utilize the automated system as well. This machine helps us make, instead of only making five or 10 a day, we can make upwards of 20 to 25 a day with this automated machine.